Guests and callers and are not necessarily those of KKNW, its management, or other advertisers. This program is sponsored by Marie Manu Cherry. Welcome to the Marie Manu Cherry Show, where energy and medicine meet. I will be your host for the next hour. I have over 19 years of healthcare experience and began my career as an energy medicine practitioner while working as an oncology nurse at a Seattle area hospital. My skill in moving energy combined with my medical background have been a catalyst for change in many people's lives. I hope the next hour will be transformative for you as well. Good morning and welcome to Marie Manu Cherry Show. We are live here in gorgeous, beautiful Seattle and we're sending a lot of positive light to our friends in the Hawaiian Islands, you know, wishing them safety and Ah, less smoke and less fires. That was unreal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been reading an entire zip code have been basically burned up. Oh, <laughs> I really? Mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's oh, it's just unreal. So yes, yeah. our our hearts and uh, yes. prayers are definitely going out to them for sure. Yeah, and to anyone in the world that's having a yeah. hard time, you know, with your body mm -hmm. or your your environment, anything that's going is is problematic for you. We wish you great light and great happiness. And uh, yeah, so well, a lot of um. Northwestern people, that's where we vacation is Hawaii. You know, we don't usually go to the. Well, not you. You go the other direction. Sometimes. No, I go to. I go, oh, do you? Oh, with okay. my family. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think oh. we've been there like 10 times. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. We've been there a lot since they were little kids. Yeah. We were there last year, actually, oh. right where the fires are. Hmm. In fact, one of the restaurants that we ate at, my daughter texts me. She goes, Mom, do you remember that restaurant we had dinner at one night? She goes, Yeah, it's not there it's anymore. Not there anymore. I'm like, oh. oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's really stunning. So a lot of, you know, uh, west coast people mm -hmm. head off to the hawaiian islands because it's yeah. like a four and a half hour direct flight you know it doesn't take very long it's to a get quick there. jaunt it's a it's jaunt. a quick jaunt yeah. so our heart goes out <laughs> to anyone in the world who's having a challenge or a difficult time of course um whatever it might be and we're taking your calls i just want to remind everyone we have a two-day in-person workshop a deep dive into the essence of self-love workshop which is critical self-love is just beyond important. If you can learn tools and techniques and have some energetic and scientific perception about how it functions, how self-love and self-worth functions, then you're going to be able to understand how to shift energy in your body and become more of a magnet to manifest exactly what you want in your life. It's like you get an upgrade in your life. And I mean, in every area of your life, the more you love yourself, the more you become this omnipresence connection to your higher self and you begin to manifest and co-create and get great knowledge, genius information about who you are, where you're going, what's happening, even the world at large. You can have a lot of questions answered in a, in a really beautiful, healthy, magnificent way through diving into this aspect of self-love. So you can visit us Saturday, October 28th and Sunday, October 29th. Just go to energyintuitive.com and click on the course page for more information. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And knowledge is important because we're constantly learning, right? Yeah. Got to build right, that brain. Right. Well, and we want to learn from really consciousness. We don't want to learn the way most humans learn. But most humans learn through a logical aspect and logic is, is good for certain things, but it's really doesn't give you the answers to life. It doesn't help you to evolve. It doesn't allow you to manifest. It's not really the way to expand and learn. Um, and, uh, so you want to be able to have a different way of connecting with the universe. And so when you love yourself, because you are a part of the universe, irreplaceable part, when you love yourself, then you begin to learn from that genius perspective that goes way beyond logic and puts you in a vibration of oneness that allows you to have magic every day here on earth, which is pure joy. It's just pure joy. Exactly. 877-825-8828 for the Marie Manu Cherry Show. Lines are already full for you. Yay. Yeah. Bring I them on. That. Sure. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. We'll take Casey now calling in from the LA area. Hi, Casey. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Great. Thanks. Hi, Casey. Okay. I'm so happy to talk to you, Marie. Like right. I've gotten so much good guidance from you through, right. via other people. And um, I wanted to call because I... I just take all your advice. And so I've been, you had told someone who didn't have a family at one point, you said, you know, talk to the universe, like the universe is your family. And 
I was like, yes, that's for me. I'm doing that. And then Yay. someone actually called that really stuck out to me. I remember the date. It was like April 2020. And someone called the very last second and they sounded like me. And it, so I was <laughs> like, whoa. And then they were like, they're, you know, they had a very low tone in their voice. And then they were like my stomach. And you were like, I've got to go, but you've got to love yourself. And you just kept hammering that in. And I was like, whoa, that was for me. I have to do that. So I've taken that advice. I've done the thing with the animals, like I have animal friends and I'd be like, well, instead of saying their name, when I say I love them, I'll say mine because they don't care and they have no idea what I'm saying. And uh, just to try to like, you know, reinstill what you, it, literally what you're just saying in the in your opening about like loving yourself. And I've just been doing all that and I feel like something is missing. And I'm wondering if mm. that is kind of from this like low self-worth sort of like family, like home wound that I have. Right. And if something like I've gone to, you know, many Vipassana retreats and what's very helpful but I feel like I'm just still, I'm something's off, you know, right. and I'm wondering if it's like a frequency shift. I'm like, is it like tuning a radio where I'm just like 0. 0.0 something from, you know, a better frequency for myself and would something like psilocybin therapy or mm. I'm thinking of seeing like a speech therapist because mm. I kind of have like a trauma list and mm. I think it I would think help it, me maybe. I think your voice is beautiful. I think it looks great. So first of all, your desire to have family in your life is authentic, real desires, which most people have real desires, especially the people that I talk to. The majority of individuals that I talk to do a lot of inner work, are very conscious, aware, like yourself, and um, are proactive in allowing themselves to expand so they can have more in this lifetime, right? They're, they're very, very proactive. So your desire is legitimate. And you can have your real family. Real family are individuals that when you meet them or you spend time with them, you feel loved, adored, and cherished. They don't have to share a drop of blood with you. In fact, you know, for many people, family isn't their family. You know, their, their genetic line is not their family at all because not many people feel loved and adored and cherished by their family. And that's, this, that's how you know. That's the litmus test for, oh, this is my family. I feel loved. I feel cherished. You know, I feel adored. So you know how, I don't think you're missing anything, but I think what keeps happening and it's, it's really okay. You, you go back to that loneliness feeling, you know, where are they? Or, and I, and it, it may not just be family, it just mean more of a community, you know, for you, where you again, feel this connection, this vibration. So whenever you have that feeling, which is perfectly understandable, I want you to be to say really lovely things to yourself in that moment because we want you to not trigger that emotion so much because whatever we trigger, whatever emotion we're triggering, that's what we're manifesting. That's what we're attracting. That's just how it works. It's always worked that way. And, and sometimes they become patterns because it, like you said, how it's like a deep wound, it's probably from multiple lifetimes. And so that feeling is so familiar and common and gets triggered so easily. But if you could just, even if you just interrupt it, 15%, maybe 20, I think you're going to be thrilled with the outcome and the resolution. So you are right there. You are, you have merged <laughs> onto the highway at the perfect moment of allowing yourself to have the, the community and the love and the family that you desire, but you're just going to have to catch, you know what I mean? Catch mm -hmm. that moment and just be nurturing to yourself. Cause that's what you want. You're missing, you know, feeling nurtured. So if you can nurture yourself, like, oh, I love you. You're so great. That's so cute that you miss that. And, I, and there's really no wound, you, you know, like, I love you so much. You're amazing. I, I think if you can give yourself a little bit of a pep talk, you know, whether it's out loud or silent in that moment, then you're not going to keep attracting what you don't want. Right. I'll keep trying. I'm doing it. I, I was like, maybe I'm doing something. There's something better I could do. <laughs> I don't know. So. I, I think Thank you're you. right there. I, I truly believe. I mean, I see you on the freeway. Like you're, you're not like on the ramp. You're not merging. You're in the traffic. You're in the flow. You just have to catch right. those moments. And the reason why those moments are um, challenging is because they're so familiar and everybody mm -hmm. has moments that whatever it is that they're wanting to manifest, if it's been a challenge or it's taken years for them to co-create what they desire, they have the feeling of lack so ingrained in their energy system that right. they keep feeding it and, and they don't even recognize it. 
until they're kind of in the rabbit hole sort of low vibration of it. Um, so I just want you to catch it as soon as it starts to happen and just appreciate yourself. And when you okay. walk anywhere, let's say you walk into a coffee shop, this is an advice that someone recently gave me, uh, just in general. If you walk someplace, I want you to think to yourself, I'm commanding appreciation. I'm commanding appreciation. I just want you to think that in your mind, because that, that's going to change your energy because you're such an appreciator of others, but you want to be appreciated. So we don't have to worry about you appreciating others. That's natural within your DNA. It's lovely. Um, does that make sense? It does. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good. And don't worry. This is, you are, you are in the flow. It's, it's all going to happen and you're going to look back and go, oh, it's happening. It's happening. You're going to just be delighted. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks, Casey, for joining us uh, from the LA area, 877-825-8828. And we'll take, uh, looks like Sharon calling in from uh, the Grand Ole Ola, PA, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay, So great. just making sure we got her. Abbreviations of to the States. Hi, this is Sharon. How Hi, are Sharon. You? Good. Hi. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Of Hi. course. Yeah, I appreciate it. Like, I've called in um, a couple of times over, you know, the last uh, few years. I always get, like, great advice, great what if questions. Um, so today I was just calling in uh, to see about a medium, mediumship reading. Uh -huh. Would that be possible? Sure, sure. Is your father still with us or has he passed? He's passed. Yeah. Is, is that who you were looking for? I actually know, but you know, it's funny. My <laughs> father seems to always come through and I love it. Oh, well. Like he... whenever I've had like an in-person mediumship uh -huh. reading, just like comes right through. That's so funny you yeah. say that. He probably stays really close to you. So some people, and I, what, I, what I'm about to say, I mean, no disrespect, disrespect to your father at all. Um, but I think he, he wants to like brush up on his parenting techniques. And so one of the ways that that's suggested when you cross over, if you think that you're going to like come back to earth, because nobody has to incarnate to this planet, they can incarnate in all kinds of different dimensions, is that when you come back to this planet, um, and, and you want to have kids that you want to be like a, a, even a more superior parent. And there's all types of different parenting techniques. I've been delighted and shocked by all the different parenting techniques I've witnessed and experienced, even in my own self, like, oh, that was a good one or oh, that was not so good. And, and so your dad just wants to be perfection. He, he realized a lot after he crossed how crucial our development is from birth to the age of five. What, what we hear, what we experience, how a child perceives things actually matter. And so your dad just wants to be the perfect parent possible. And I don't see you complaining about him, actually. <laughs> you know, that's why it's so surprising that he's so close. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, that's just something that he wants to, um, it's, it's a desire that he has. Yeah. So uh, are you looking for a, fe are you looking for a female then? Yeah. 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 But I'm so thank you about my father. And it's so yeah. funny. He was, he was a wonderful father, but he was difficult. Right. Oh, and, interesting. but since he's passed, his wisdom is, uh, and it's been, you know, many years now, his wisdom is almost thought about like, like at least weekly. So, um, he was a really great, a great parent. And I really think I appreciated him more after he was gone. Yeah. So that's funny that he, he wants to, yeah. He'll, I know. He'll be able to perfect that. I know He's it's really funny because I, I don't see you complaining, you know, and, and a lot of times when I see parents wanting to be better parents, I mean, like there's a lot to be complaining about and, um, and I'm not, no parents perfect, right? It's, I think it's one of the hardest jobs on the planet. Um, but your dad is just so committed to be one of those superior parents that gives their children that upper edge, not only for their success, but they're just complete and total happiness and fulfillment. And he now knows, oh, wow, those first five years, super critical because we're creating our belief system during that time period. And that runs our life unless we actively work on dismantling our belief system, which very few people do. Yeah. So a woman, you've got a couple women over there, actually, maybe three, um, maybe a few generations. Is your mother still with us? No, no, my mom's gone. And that's so funny you say three because yeah, the three, three. the closest to um, are there. Oh. Yeah, so it's exactly three. Okay, yeah. Um, and they get along, but they kind of don't get along. You know, like you, you're, the women in your family are spicy. You know, you, you, would you agree with that? 
Um, <laughs> not yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, you can disagree. Going, yeah. There are different levels of spice too. Yeah, I, mean. I guess so. <laughs> I just, or you know, I know you, you, your father was difficult because you told me that your dad's difficult. I don't see him that way, honestly. I, I don't know if your mom made things more difficult, and some parents make things more difficult behind the scenes. Or there, there's a lack of affection going on, and that other person is is just annoyed because there isn't a lot of affection. But the women in your family are strong. Maybe that's a better word. They're strong, and they're, you know, they're, they kind of stand their ground, even, right or wrong. Does that make sense? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right. So, so they like each other, but they kind of don't like each other. But they do. You know, the one of the things that I love about your family is that everyone will come together to help all the people on earth that that um, need help that's in their family in a heartbeat. Like there's no question. They will automatically do that no matter what. And they say that you're one of those people that doesn't need a lot of help. <laughs> you know, that like you've got it figured out. You know how to get to the sweet spot. Would you agree with that? Um, I think I'm I'm getting better at that. I I am definitely practicing it and uh and 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 getting better at it. So that's kind of nice to know. I don't need a lot of help because you don't. uh yeah, that's nice to know because you I've don't. really been working on it. Um maybe they they did some good help in the past. <laughs> yeah. Do you have children? I don't. Do you have nieces or nephews that are like children? I do. Yeah, I have a niece and a nephew. Because one of the kids is requiring the help right now. And I don't know which one. So uh, Or both. Or both. Yeah. Okay, both Very of them. Much. So all the, the three people over there, that's where their focus is on is the younger generation. They're trying to help. I, I only see one. But, if I mean, you know the kids better than I do. But one of them they feel like needs support right now. You know, like it isn't getting it. It's just not getting it. And just not figuring out life you know, like, and is annoyed that they have to figure out life. So that means maybe somebody was over nurtured. One of the, one of the children was over nurtured or perhaps both of them, but one of them figured it out. And one of them hasn't quite figured it out. Does that make sense? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So nurturing kids is a tricky thing, you know, like they need nurturing. So there's a whole bunch of people that didn't get any nurturing when they were kids, tons of people on the planet. And then there's a smaller percentage of, of kids who were severely over nurtured. And then they don't know how to function in life. They, they don't know how to be, they don't, they're not go-getters. They don't know how to get things resolved or done. It's pretty fascinating. And, and then their parents clearly don't know how to help them with that. So it's, it's tricky. So they're all three trying to m- move mountains and make magic to help at least one of your, um, you know, uh, niece or nephew have more success in their life. That's good to hear. That's great. Yeah, but they love you to pieces. They adore you. They cherish you. I feel like there's more than one generation over there um, in the female yes. population. And they just. Yeah. It, it's my, I'm thinking my sister. Right? Oh, your sister. Like, oh. Yeah. Uh, w- mm-hmm. Was she fairly young when she passed then? She was. Yeah. Could... Yeah, she was. Yeah. Okay. She was 40. She was 40. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking maybe a cousin, but uh, maybe a tad bit younger. And then your mom and then maybe an aunt, you know, that's the kind of, that's how the trifecta kind of looks to me. I have lots of females now that I'm thinking about it. I yeah. was thinking my mother-in-law. Oh, but, um, your mother-in-law, but, wow, I do have- your mother-in-law, she says that she, she loves your family, but she, she says that trifecta is a little annoying. So she likes to do her own things on her own. She doesn't want to wait for people to figure stuff out. She just wants to go and do work. So, so your mother-in-law is kind of separate from that. Was that who you were wanting to talk to though? Which one? Um, oh, my sister, my yeah. sister, but I just love that my father comes through. Yeah, I just yeah. do. He's, yeah. he's really amazing. And I do have actually, now that you're mentioning it, I do have a cousin and an aunt wow. that I was close to, wow. um, a c- couple of aunts. So yeah, no, there's lots going on over there. It's so, busy. So thank you. It's, you're welcome. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Okay. You too. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Yeah, thanks very much for calling into the show, uh, 877-825-8828. Or for more information about Marie and what she loves to do on the air for you all to listen to is energyintuitive.com. We have tons of events coming up as well. We'll mention that a little bit later on. But first, our break, right? Sure. Let's do it. We'll be right back with more from Marie. That's Join me, Marie Manucherry, for a two-day in-person workshop 
self-love. Allow yourself to take a deep dive into the essence of self-love. Self-love is the highest energy one can embrace while living in a physical reality like Earth. Its vibration, once held within your human energy system, can radically change your world for the better. Self-love is an experience, not a thought. Its existence in your body, energy system, and spirit will attract incredible outcomes by naturally upgrading every area of your human experience. Join me Saturday, October 28th and Sunday, October 29th for this beautiful two-day in-person workshop. Lunch is included. It's at the Lodge at St. Edward's Park, just outside of Seattle in Kenmore, Washington. To learn more, go to energyintuitive.com. Com. Do you make a positive difference in the world? Do you have a talent, philosophy, base of knowledge, product or service that you know could help a lot of people if only you could reach them? Join Alternative Talk 1150's family of broadcasters and start walking down a fruitful path as host of your very own program. Dial 425-653-1150 and find out just how affordable it can be to have a show on 1150 AM. That's 425-653-1150. Alternative Talk, we have an opportunity waiting just for you. Join me, Marie Maggie Cherry, for a two-day in-person workshop about self-love. Allow yourself to take a deep dive into the essence of self-love. Self-love is the highest energy one can embrace while living in a physical reality like Earth. Its vibration, once held within your human energy system, can radically change your world for the better. Self-love is an experience, not a thought. Its existence in your body, energy system, and spirit will attract incredible outcomes by naturally upgrading every area of your human experience. Join me Saturday, October 28th and Sunday, October 29th for this beautiful two-day in-person workshop. Lunch is included. It's at the Lodge at St. Edward's Park, just outside of Seattle in Kenmore, Washington. To learn more, go to Energy Intuitive. Alternative Talk 1150. It's good for what ails you. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. And welcome back to the Marie Manu Cherry Show. We're live here just outside of Seattle, sending love around the world to everyone and reminding you, this is your hour of self-love. This is your moment where we're all hanging out together, us in the studio, everyone on the planet, and all the beings throughout the universes, that we're here together to love one another and to deeply, deeply fall in love with oneself. You know, creation, which is the universe or God or the cosmos, whatever goddesses, whatever words you want to use, only loves. Like that's its that's its primary breath is just love. And so when you dive into this, you know, interesting, it's really interesting to be in human form and work on self-love because we've just been educated and taught and everything around us has told us not to love ourselves, that it's selfish or it's not humble. Uh, it, it has said so many negative things that are so deep within all of our structures from religion to politics to gender identity everything regarding loving oneself has it has not been supported it has not been part of our critical undertaking it's not something in, in our educational system at all it, it's 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 getting a little bit better i think and the educational system i think the little kids are appreciating and valuing themselves more so so this is one of the key reasons why people incarnate to a physical reality to have contractual experiences. That means contrast, uh, where um, you know you're having an experience, but if you can change something within yourself that's contractually different than what you're experiencing, then you have a different outcome. You become this creative painter or artist of your own life, just going deep into the cosmos of light and color and energy to manifest collectively and individually what it is that we want to create. And everyone is such a budding genius of light <laughs> inside of them. I'm not kidding. Everyone is incredibly talented. Everyone is superior beyond any way we could describe it or feel about it. Everyone is beyond magnificent. And so when you start loving yourself, you start 
tapping into these resources that are already inside of you. And it's like you're feeding them water, you're feeding them sunshine, and they start to grow. And you start to go, oh, I'm also, I could also do this. And I'm also this way. And it's, it's really, I know it's kind of hard to describe if you haven't experienced it before, but I guarantee you that spending any amount of time, which means every day, feeling love for yourself, it's a feeling, not a thought, um, will allow this magnificence inside of you that's always been there to become visible and tangible in your own human life experience. Yeah. Got it. 877-825-8828, The Marie Manu Cherry Show. And uh, did you want to grab another pair of headphones? Are you okay? with? Yeah, no, I'm okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just holding it. All right. Yeah. Well, the, if, we can adjust it if you need. It's okay. Okay. Uh, moving on, Kaylin from Seattle. Hi, Kaylin. Welcome to The Marie Manu Cherry Show. Hello. Hello. Um, hi, Marie. Hi. What can I do for you? I, I have been having a difficult time coming to an agreement with my brother for hmm. our plan of care for our mother. Oh my God. Recently been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you yeah. my family saga, but I can um, relate. So go ahead. Please go it's ahead. It's overwhelming. And yes. I'm hoping for some guidance. Well, the guidance is, and you're not going to like it. <laughs> Part of this happens to be because of your mother, because she hasn't yeah. made good choices and decisions about who should be in charge of her care. Agreed? Yes. Right. So, so, so that becomes problematic. It becomes extremely problematic. So I would, for now, because it's still kind of in the beginning aspects of the unraveling of your family dynamics, agreed? Like, you know, everything's yeah. changing and, you know, your, your mom can't totally make decisions for herself. Probably she can still to some degree, but that's just going to keep dwindling. So what you're going to have to do is keep it in your back pocket because there isn't a lot you can do right now and unless you involve social workers and let's say your mother is deemed unable to make decisions for herself and then you spend money and hire lawyers and go to courts and get that ability yourself. That's kind of where you are right now. Well, we have durable power of attorney, my brother and I, mm -hmm. and she's already deemed that she needs 24-hour supervision and her decline has progressed so fast. Mm -hmm. um, my brother was trying to move them to Arizona, but then I feel like his plan did not look like it was going to happen. Um, and so he's wanting to come up here, but I don't really feel like he's the best person to care for her. And I have some concerns about his strategy on doing so, if that makes any sense. Well, you're really and lucky that you have dual power of attorney, but it sounds like you're not using your power. You're letting yes. him use his power and make decisions, which I agree with you. He isn't the best okay. decision maker. Um, right. He's not. So your mom actually did do a better job. She gave it to both of you. But you have to, you're going to have to assert your power. So you're actually in a better spot than I thought you were, which is excellent. Okay. Right. It's, okay. But energetically, your energy mm -hmm. s says, I don't have power, but you do. So, okay. so you're going to have to remind your brother that there's dual power of attorney. Do you feel comfortable reminding him of that? Yes. Okay. And so the decisions need to be discussed between the two of you and you need to come to mutual. That's what that term means. When you have dual power of attorney that way, it means that you have to come to mutual agreement. And so that means you can't just stand on the sidelines and wait for him to choose something that you want him to choose. You're going to have to figure out what, what do you want? What do you think is in the best interest of your mother? And then yes. you two are going to have to sit down at the negotiating table and pound out something that would be appropriate for that. So I'm aware of that stage. I'm in that right now. And I guess the guidance question to be a little bit more specific while I have you on the phone is he's wanting to move in and be her caretaker, but I'm having hesitations around that for a lot of different reasons. If that pathway was open for him to do so, do you think that would be best for uh, everyone involved? Or, or hiring a professional, like I was more so thinking. I think you should trust your intuition. I really do. Okay. I th and so let's say that if if he wants to do that, that let's yeah. say that he does it a couple of days a week, but you have a professional and they're multiple. It's, it's really hard to take care of people, especially when they're mentally yes. declining. And then, of course, with Alzheimer's and there's physical declinement too as well. It's very difficult. It's not an easy thing. Yes. 
right? So yeah, I think it's, that's what I've been trying to negotiate. Well, and and remember, you get to say no. I don't agree with that. You okay. you have the other part of the power. So think of it. It's like two pair. It's like a pair of pants. There's two legs. You're one of the legs. And if you say I don't want to do it, then we don't have a a pair. We don't have a, a full set of legs. You can say no. Okay. And do, do you know what I mean? Yes. And I've been continuing to say no, but he's so pushy. And that's why I am kind of in the stuck energy of not knowing exactly how to solve this. But well, I understand what you're saying. You're telling me to listen to my intuition. Yes. And not let anyone just push me into a decision I'm not comfortable with because my intuition is screaming. That's not the best choice for our family. Exactly. And that means okay. you're going to, your job is to let him respect your no. So this is really for you in this circumstances. This is about you owning your power, right? Okay. That's what this is okay. really about. You owning your power. Um, you know, once, of course, you've looked at this from all the different angles and you're owning your own power and you're saying, mm -hmm. I don't agree with you. So we can't move forward with your decision because I don't agree with you. So we either have to come to some sort of compromise or we have to have a completely different plan because I'm not comfortable with your decision. Okay. Ooh. Any other, any other guidance that stood out to you? Well, I think your mother's very lucky. Clearly she has children who adore her and love her and want the best for her. She's a lucky woman. She's a very, yeah. very lucky woman. And if your brother wants to help, let him help a little bit, but maybe not all okay. the time, you know? Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that way he doesn't feel completely shut out of this other situation. In fact, you could even say to him, why don't we have, you know, help four days a week or and whatever, so you can see what it's like. Yeah. And see if you're I comfortable with it. Period. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's not mm -hmm. a suggestion. It's not an option. You were telling him what you were willing to compromise with. And there's no wiggle room. No wiggle Thank room. Thank you for reminding me. For, of yeah, that. you're, you're you. very lucky. Your mother actually made an excellent decision. Excellent decision. Aww. So Thank you so much for your time. Sure. I'm just going to point out one more thing before we go. You're very welcome. So when people give up their power, which is kind of what you were doing in this situation, which is a pattern of yours, where you, you're just too nice and you're compromising and you care about people and you don't want anyone to be hurt. You know what I mean? Yes. So that needs to go away. So when, when that happens, when I looked at your energy, it looked like your mother had made a poor decision uh, and that because you, there was a lack of power, but in reality, she'd made an excellent decision and, and she's helping you even in her um, release of her consciousness, she's helping you to regain your power before she leaves the earth. She wants you to gain this beautiful aspect of yourself and she's helping you to do so. Thank you so much for, for telling me that. Yeah, you. you're really welcome. Have a beautiful day. Yeah, thanks very much, Kaylin, for joining us from the Seattle area, 877-825-8828. And we'll take, uh, looks like Aisha calling in from Puerto Rico. Ooh. So Aisha, hello. Hi. Hello, how are you? We're good. We're great. Thank you, Aisha. What can I do for you? Um, yes, I would. Um, maybe if you could combine a little bit of mediumship and a little bit of energy reading. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see how much time we have. <laughs> is, is it a man that you're looking for? Yes. Uh huh. Is it your dad? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, just want to make sure, you know, because nobody looks like their age anymore. I mean, some people do actually, but, you know, everybody just looks <laughs> younger, you know. People, Why, thank you. <laughs> people so live sweet. longer, you know, like it, it's really lovely. Yeah. Your dad, your dad is one of the few, and I'm sorry that he's on the other side. Your dad is one of the few people that I see when they cross over who miss earth. Most people are like, yay, I'm out of here. Yeah. You know, they're, they're so excited. Right. You know, especially <laughs> if their body's been challenging. And of course your body has to die before you leave. And, and when I think of leaving earth, I think of there's an advancement of energy. Your energy climbs to higher frequencies and vibrations and you advance to another mm -hmm. dimension. But your father, yeah. he, he misses everybody. So oh. either mm -hmm. he didn't get to spend a lot of time with you when you were young or there's a lot of things he wanted to say before or he really was a lover of earth. He, he misses everyone. Yeah, he had Alzheimer's, so oh. for the past years he was here, but he wasn't, so oh. I think that's part of it. I agree with you. I agree. In fact, 
the interesting part when you have, you know, certain forms of dementia or you're in comas, um, most of your energy is actually on the other side. It's like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. So he wasn't really with you. Like he wasn't with you in the way that you knew him. And he really, really wasn't really with you. He wants me to tell you he is completely proud of his family. Oh, he, he said, we should be a model template. And, and he says this, and no disrespect to Americans, he goes, but for Americans, <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. You know, because we, we have a different way of, of family unity, right? We have a slightly different way. Um, yeah. But he says, w- we should market us. He goes, he goes, he goes, no family's perfect. We have our issues, but we yeah. always come together. When yeah. stuff's hard, we all come together and we help the other person as much as possible. Yes. He says, it's like our family motto, you know? Yes. He said the bad thing is if everything's going good in your life and in, in your family, you, you might feel ignored because, they, you know, they kind of just, <laughs> you know, cheer for the underdog, so to speak. You know? yes. um, but he is grateful um, for all of you. He loves you. He says, thank you for taking such good care of me, making sure oh. I was safe and loved and clean and fed. He goes, and I was hard to feed towards the end. I wasn't easy. He goes, I was not easy. Um, and he said, he just says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He goes, I made a great choice. And the people who decided to come be my family, um, also made a great choice. And he's, he's just grateful your dad is. Oh, thank you. He loves you all so much. Thank you. So when did he pass? Oh, he passed uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, that's so, even harder too, right? Just Yes, <gasps> yes. Especially for my mother. They were both in an assisted living place um, together, which was a blessing for both. But then in the pandemic, she was pretty much, you know, alone. We, we, you know, we were swimming with her. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That, it even makes more sense why your dad misses everyone, you know, not just yeah. because of his mind taking a vacation Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. his family couldn't visit him wow wow so Mm -hmm. so were you guys calling the staff all the time and telling them what to do oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. because your your fault because I go well I said to him um I said well what about the feeding thing you just said they fed you he goes oh no my family called they bothered them they harassed them you know to make sure that we were taking care of I didn't know your mother was there but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was there. She was making sure. But I also in the beginning, I had a camera put in his room. Oh, that's very smart of yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Just to like be safe. For children, like for babies, you know, you yeah. can watch what the care was being yeah. given was correct. Yeah. Yeah. I just ordered some for the inside of the house too, so I can watch Charles when I'm not there. <laughs> like, what's he doing? What's he doing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he yeah. loves all of you. So he's really saying thank you. You know, oh, and and now you. I know even more why, because the circumstances were so difficult and challenging. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, and I know I understand now why he misses all of you and he loves you and he says thank you. And um, he'll be flying around and, you know, hanging out in the cosmos in a couple of years. But for now, he's going to stay close to all of you and make sure that you know how much he loves you. Oh, wonderful. Okay. That's great. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, oh, energy. Um, y- you need to stop giving your energy away. You have several leaks and multiple vortexes. So, yes. okay. <laughs> okay. Can, can I get a what if? What if? what if? Yeah. What if it's okay to receive? And what if I do it all the time and I maintain the energy in my beautiful body? Yay. Okay. okay. All okay. right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. Have a good day. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Aisha, for calling in from Puerto Rico. Ooh, and uh, I want to go to Puerto Rico. I've it heard it's a fun just, place. I've been there. You have? I have. Oh my gosh. I've heard it's gorgeous. I also want to go to Portugal. I guess I want to go to all oh, the I'd like to go there. Yeah. Portugal. The cities remind me or the ta- the little t- towns look like Italy and Spain, Aww. kind of a mixture and Greece. They're just so beautiful. Pretty yeah. Little towns. Yeah. I want to go there. If you burn calories, you walk around. You don't need cars. I know. It's funny. When I, when I go to Greece, uh, I eat a lot because mm-hmm. they feed us. But the food's better. The, the, yeah. Well, I eat really, really good. True. I, I only eat organic primarily. I eat like, I don't but know. That's what I, that started. That's what I mean. That they yeah. I eat there. really, really, well, really, really good. The farm. Food. But I eat so much when I'm in Greece because they feed us three meals and there's dessert, <laughs> you know, there's just tons of food, but we are walking. Yeah. You know, the whole time you're in Europe. I mean, when mm-hmm. I was in Ireland, I didn't even rent a car. I just walked everywhere. 
um, I mean, I walk a lot here in the States. Yeah. I walk about five miles a day, yeah. but, but Get yeah. Get that step count up. Yeah. All right. 877-825-8828 for the Marie Manu Cherry Show. We're at our last break of the hour. We'll take that right now and we'll be right back with more and our callers after the break. Hello, this is Marie Mandy Cherry. One of the things I love about working with the human energy system is the dance between the chakras and the aura. In fact, as a healer, I always talk to all of my clients energy all session long. And I love what they tell me. I love what the org field expresses to me in terms of, of its beliefs, beliefs that could have been there for centuries. And maybe they need an adjustment which could positively affect a chakra or multiple chakras in the body that governs the anatomy of the human form. I'm going to teach a class on this called the dance of the chakras and the aura. That class will be September 27th through December 20th. This 12 week amazing course about the dance of your energy system will help you to learn how to become aware of the messages that are passing through your energy system or those you may work with. Understand how dialogue between the aura and the chakras affects your current reality and previous lifetimes too. Discover how to listen to the aura and the chakras. For more information, visit energyintuitive.com. Have you ever wanted to go above and beyond for your community? Volunteering for your local fire or EMS department is your opportunity. Join a family that will serve with you, always have your back, and train you to be the best version of yourself. As a volunteer, you will meet new people, learn new skills, and make a meaningful impact. Learn more at MakeMeAFirefighter.org. That's MakeMeAFirefighter.org. Hello, this is Marie Manu Cherry, and this fall I have a brand new class coming up, eight-week course called The Soul's Journey. And in this powerful, fun, amazing class where we all come together once a week for eight weeks, you will learn how you are forever a soul, extremely wise and adventurous, curious above all that you have traveled throughout space and in many different realities for centuries. Your soul knows the worlds beyond earth in detail and wishes for your human awareness to become familiar with its path. Join me and discover what unique life forms live in other dimensions. Learn about the laws that govern the universe and tap into your soul's desires for this lifetime and so much more. This class will begin September 25th through November 13th. Go to energyintuitive.com for more. Make it a great day. Keep your dial on Alternative Talk 1150. And welcome back to the Marie Manu Cherry Show. We're live here in Seattle, sending love to everyone and reminding you, this is your moment, your hour. <laughs> Self-love. <laughs> just, just start. If you've never done it before, just try it a little bit. If you've done it some, try doing it every single day. It, it is life transforming. And as I said earlier, you will upgrade every area of your life. And that feels so good. And that it inspires you to love yourself more. If you have kids, you can think about, wow, what if I love myself as much as I love my children or pets? Some people love parts of the world. I have a bunch of friends who love Hawaii. They feel like they say they feel like themselves every time they step on the island. I think Ireland's probably my place. Uh, I mean, I just love, love Ireland. Um, so it doesn't matter what you love, but sometimes you need a little bit of a comparison to understand what it feels like to have self-love. It, it's going to feel like how you feel when you're loving something else or someone else so deeply and so beautifully. That's how it's meant to feel when you're loving yourself. Perfect. All right. 877-825-8828. And let's take uh, doo -doo -doo, Sean from Kenmore. Hi, Sean. Hi there. Hi. How are you? Good. 
I am calling. I'm so thankful I got through because recently I've become aware of a being who identifies herself as the crone. And <laughs> she nice. Is, she is snarky. She's Aww. funny. She's incredibly powerful and wise. Yeah. And, and you're I talking not... about yourself too, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is part of you. Okay. But, but go ahead. I mean, yeah, I, th I think this is part of you. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm actually calling because she speaks another language when she comes through mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, it's very familiar to me, but not, yeah. not. I, th and I think you're stepping into your crone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this happens, it probably happens to men too, but it's mostly women that I've heard this experience with where there's a part of them that kind of awakens and it feels very different like oh I'm mad at that now and that doesn't make me happy and 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 there's this wisdom that comes through this deeper understanding so you can look at it as something separate if you want to but I think mm. it's a part of you that's coming through that you haven't allowed to come through because you've been too nice wow you've been way too nice and, and it's nice to be a nice person but it's not helpful it's not helpful for the people who need boundaries, right? And it's mm -hmm. not helpful for you to manifest and create and, you know, paint your life the way you want it to be. If you're being too nice to everyone else, you're not going to get what you want. Not fully. It's going to be challenging, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just like, yes. like even yesterday, as an example, my kids who live in, in Washington were at one of my daughter's homes and they were, they ordered dinner and they invited me. And I wanted to go, believe me, I really did. But I was actually tired. I've been doing a lot of work in the house and, and just working a lot lately. And so I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm exhausted. I just, I'm not going to come. And I had to like fight with myself to like, it's okay, mm. you know, that you didn't get to go hang out with all the grandkids and your kids and have dinner with everyone because I, I love them so mm. much. I just adore them. Um, so the crone comes to help you balance your life so that you can have more of what is in your best interest. And I it, love that, <laughs> except it's what? created so much. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever it's, anyone talk, I, I'll let you speak. I'm so sorry. I keep interrupting no, you. No, that's okay. Whenever anyone t talks to me about their crone energy, or the first time someone told me my crone was awakening, I'm like, what are you talking about? I actually see a witch, like with a crooked nose, you know, and she's annoying and she's, she's not very compromising. But that's what happens when you are too nice. People get used to you over compromising and ignoring your own desires and yeah, doing this makes Go perfect ahead. sense. <laughs> it makes perfect sense because that's where I am in my life at 52. And she right. came through unexpectedly speaking, <laughs> speaking to my husband and my husband's like, yes, please. And I'm like, wait, what? And the, but my body mm -hmm. is having a lot of like discomfort I suppose it's like my heart my just I don't you know she she did say go shake hands with the trees and so I'm like out in the backyard with really? my shrubs like you know like you holding on to them and feeling very comforted by them but I also now need to continue <laughs> trying to live regularly but I feel completely topsy-turvy I feel yeah and I'm well great I'm really grateful for the Everything is through. changing, you know, like how people view you, how you want to be seen, how you want to be treated. Uh, and, and crone energy happens right around, you know, premenopausal time, typically. It, it's like, it's kind of like, mm, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like somehow because the over nurturing energy kind of calms down when we go into premenopausal symptoms, whenever someone does that. And then the self-nurturing energy turns on. So you probably need some herbs for your hormones because women have a, a list, a sea of symptoms that occur when their energy starts to change from their hormones, a list of them. Pe women can talk about palpitations and um, not getting enough rest and all kinds. I mean, the list is endless. I also think it's good to have a checkup, you know, just to you know, make sure our modern medicine looks at our body. I think that's always healthy but you probably need herbs now to balance your hormones. 
And then when you're looking at me energetically, it feels sealed. And Amazing. It feels so good. Like Yay. you're so pissed off in that lower abdominal area. Like you're mad as, as can be. And that's yeah. probably why the, the crone keeps waking up and going, wait a minute. Are you sure you want to do that? Go hug a tree and let's talk about it. You know, <laughs> it's true. And it's, it's, I'm job hunting currently. I left my, my recent job. I, I feel, you know, good about that, but now I'm job hunting and I just keep getting angry at job postings. <laughs> right. Like, this, this is challenging. It's not challenging. This is good information because you shouldn't take jobs that piss you off. Yeah. You want to, so that means you're not looking in the right direction. You may have to reevaluate your entire career. There's a, a, the Chrome comes in because you haven't been making decisions that are in your best interest. You've made great decisions for everyone and the whole, which is kind of a female problem where women do everything so that everything is cohesive and everyone gets along and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's, it's a lovely ability to have, but it's limited if it's not balanced with your own personal needs. So, yeah, good, yeah, good point. And I, uh, she, she wants to talk to people. She's always like, Ooh, let me talk to people. And I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> I, I don't know. How I love I it. I love it. I love it. And I actually, I was at your Bothell event and oh. I wrote, a, I wrote a little note to you after, cause there was a very oh, long one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. and I, I was love that note. so, I was so grateful of how bold you are because she, she is like, yes, like that, like be bold. And I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> Well, I, so, I thank my crone because if I, because some people don't let the crone out if they've been too nice, right? They, they don't let it out. It, and that creates more health problems, actually. Um, but yeah, I let my crone out and I changed my entire life. Luckily, you don't have to change as much as I had to change in my life. Um, you don't have to make, you know, I had to change my marriage and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. But you don't have to do that from what I can see. But you do need to change your work. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. And I've probably been in a support things. position. Yeah. You, it's, it's about what makes you happy. You have a lot of gifts. Mm. You have a lot of talents. You're a de devoted worker. You're a hard worker. What mm -hmm. inspires you? What makes you happy? Don't use your logical mind to figure it out because the, log the, the logical mind doesn't understand intuition. It can't. And that's okay. Yeah. That's perfectly yeah. fine. Uh, but, so okay, this great. is exciting. Good job. Mm, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy to be able to talk to you today. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. I appreciate it. Have a beautiful day. Yeah. Thanks, Sean, for uh, joining in from Kenmore. And I think we'll take uh, one more caller before uh, the end of the show. And we're going to wow. travel over to Germany. We have Susan Aww. joining us. Hi, Susan. Hi. How are you? We're great. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Great, Susan. So lovely to chat with you. What can I do for you? Um, I have a quick uh, question. Since I was a little girl, girl, I've been writing and journaling. And a couple of years ago, I wrote a book. And it's very hard to get it published. So I wanted to know, do I am I a writer or I'm not a writer? Or is this book for myself? Well, first of all, writing, you are a writer. It makes you happy. It brings you great joy. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But you're going to have to change your energy about receptivity. So you're not good at letting other people help you. Did you know that? I know. Yes. <laughs> and you're <laughs> fiercely independent. And when you get a publisher, they have to help you. So I want you to start letting people help you. I want you to start having conversations with yourself. Maybe look in the mirror and say, honey, it's really okay to let everyone help you, sweetheart. You deserve it. You're a hard worker. Yes, you could do it yourself. But it's also nice to let people help you. Um, okay. <laughs> that because the publisher is going to help you with everything, and they're even going to pay you money. <laughs> uh -huh. So, so you have to become. Well, I, I had a publisher. In, it's it's written in English because I'm bilingual, oh, and great. I had a publisher in Munich. Yeah. And it's about um, my marriage, and he he was afraid of liability. Even so, I changed everything, names, and so I thought maybe it's not the time yet. No, this is about your receptivity. Okay. So if you change your receptivity, if the book needs to change in any way, shape, or form, it will naturally do so. You'll feel inspired and make whatever changes you need to do. But this is about receiving. So the, so people are uplifted and get that bump up in their life when they love themselves more and value and appreciate themselves. They also let people help them more. Like I have painters in my house right now. 
and they're only painting cert certain things. So I've asked them, just leave the tape where it is. And I've been painting at night and early in the morning, just kind of because they already taped everything, which is the hardest part of painting. And, and they're expert tapers. I mean, like everything is covered beautifully. So I, I wanted to paint even five years ago. And I'm so glad I didn't because I'm really kind of picky about my aesthetics. I'm, I'm weird that way. I'm so glad I didn't because I allowed someone to help me. These, these guys, you know, taped everything beautifully and painted the hard parts and I'm just painting the easy parts. So every area of your life is going to be upgraded. You need to work on receptivity and start saying, what if I'm a New York Times best selling author? Start saying that. That's your new what if question. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. I'd love that. <laughs> okay. 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 Keep us posted. Have a beautiful day in Germany. Yeah, you too. Thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in for this hour and loving yourself more and finding ways to love yourself and better understand this whole concept of self-love. We wish you joyful blessings. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.